All right, um, chapter two, part six. Uh, the aftermath of Mal. And, um, oh, text message, I'll have to answer that in a minute. So, uh, the aftermath of Mal and, um, enter, let's call her Aunt Bina. So, uh, my father's brother and his wife and family, uh, from, from what he, from what my, my father said, they weren't doing well wherever they were living after, you know, back in Jersey or somewhere Jersey adjacent. Um, you know, it was always said that like back in Jersey was just this, this place where just everybody couldn't afford to be there. Just everybody couldn't afford to live. Um, that's, you know, kind of, it seemed like the story that, um, you know, we were told it's just, it's just ridiculous. Every it's, it's completely unsafe. Nobody can afford to live there. And, um, that's why we came here. It's so much better here. It's so much better. And, what I felt like was the armpit of America for the most part because of my particular experiences. It's so much better here. You can afford to live here, um, you know, and it's safer and it's the Bible Belt. It's Christian and it's safer and it's better. But all of my terrible, unsafe moments in life were right there. When I was in Jersey, I had friends of all different colors and hues. Um, you know, besides the one-off situations, racism wasn't a thing and kids were kids. And there was a whole lot of things to do. There was a there was a beach. And there were actual malls. There were actual stoplights. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Um, so chapter six, um, Aunt Bina. So um, uh, my Aunt Bina, uh, her husband and uh, children, they move into a home on the same street as us. And um, uh, my my uh, dad acquired a you know I guess he got them set up in the house and he also I remember he was very proud of the fact that he was able to help them and have them get them a car as well so when they came they came there to having a house and a car um, and that was really cool you know and um, I looked up to his ability to be able to like you know kind of rehab people and do great things for for people um, like that so uh from my understanding the way that it's told to me was that there was a lot of contention built up between their household and ours a lot of jealousy from my aunt and that she had no good intentions her intention was to just blow up and destroy the family and that's why she encouraged uh you know me to come out and tell my family what had been happening to me um and so sometimes it makes me wonder that they already know it and were they just mad because i said it uh, but, you know, these are questions I probably will never have an answer to, and I've made peace with that, uh, which is why I'm able to talk about all of this without, you know, just <laughs> crying and breaking down and all that, because I did the work. I did the work, and, and I am healed. Um, so there's that. Or at least I'm a lot more healed than <laughs> than what I was years ago. I'll say that. Uh, so uh, this man, Mal, is no longer living in our home. This was, uh, you know, he had been there for the majority of the three years I was there. And then all of a sudden, I just, like, he just wasn't there anymore. Like, never knew. And he wasn't at the church anymore either. Never, ever knew why. There was never a conversation about any of this. He just was gone. And I was very relieved. I was, I mean, I could, I could breathe a little bit better. And um, come to find out that uh, my parents put him out because he was stealing from them yeah he was uh so my aunt was like a youth like a youth woman's ministry leader and she had this really cool like praise dance team and what I really liked about it was that um she actually really knew uh some some real dance skills so we were learning something that we could actually take into the world and body movement and things like that that I didn't see again until I went to college um, for music and, and, and stuff like that uh, at UNT, which was so cool. Um, and um, she also would, as when we, whenever we came together, uh, this was the first time I saw someone do like a ministry that was actually relational to us. It wasn't just sitting there and reading the Bible and that's it. And we're bored out of our freaking mind. Um, she brought it to our level and I'm so appreciative of that time um, with her because we would talk about real things that matter to us and that affected our lives. 
so one particular time we got together we were we were you know doing some dance routines um as a matter of fact that's when i was introduced to dawkins and dawkins oh my god like i did not know that like church music could be cool until um i heard you know some of that stuff that and then trinity five seven and i remember there would be these jokes even in my house where um you know my my dad and, and some other people would call them gospel hoes and all this stuff and i used to think what like why are you guys putting down you know something that's cool and that's should be like you're up like isn't this on brand with you being you know a preacher but the jealousy is real when it comes to people who just are controlling and um uh just is really not healthy not healthy and, and in it for the wrong reasons i think so anyway uh you know really cool music uh that time uh, having her there for me it was transformative in a positive way um I don't know if she had malicious intentions, but, you know, to this day, this is what my mother maintains. My father's, I've never heard him speak on it, but she's probably regurgitating things that he said, probably. Um, so Aunt Bina was uh, talking with us and she always had a way of making whatever that lesson was relational to us and getting really personal with us. And we all needed that. I wound up discovering that I was not the only one that was dealing with monsters in her home. There was another young lady who you know, her own father, he went to jail for um, R-wording his own children. And I always wonder why she seemed to be kind of like just, just different and off. Well, if I lived in that home, I don't even know if I would have a mind. God. So anyway, there was a lot happening in these little towns that are supposed to be safer and, and better and you can afford to live. You can afford the rent. It don't cost nothing because all these places are poor. They didn't have nothing. So they could, didn't have nothing. They couldn't charge nothing. Ah, okay, I'm trying to stay on track here. So this particular lesson this night was about uh, people being appropriate and not inappropriate with you. And I remember but before she got even halfway through it, I wanted to break down on the inside it was a feeling of like relief and I really feel seen and I also really feel exposed and I feel scared. Uh, and at the end, she said, if anyone has ever, uh, I don't know, some these will happen in class, these moments happen in class too, or used to where somebody will come in and talk about like maybe like uh, the R word, this and that. And someone will say, if anyone has ever experienced X, Y, and Z, please raise your hand. And it seemed like the longest, I don't know, couple seconds of my life while I thought, you know, is this my chance to speak up or do I just shut up? Because I've been confronted once before by my mom and she, you know, she may have had good intentions, but the way she said it to me in my home one day, she was like, what's going on? I feel like something's going on. And I felt like she was accusing me and not trying to protect me. Looking back, I think she was reacting out of fear and doing the best she could, but I shut down and closed down even more and I would never say it because all I felt from her at that moment, it felt like wrath and judgment and that she was coming after me and not going after the freaking monster. The way that my aunt approached everything, I felt safe. I remember that. I felt safe and I felt seen. Seen. <laughs> I felt safe and seen. So I raised my hand and when I did, I was not the only girl. I was not the only girl in that church group who did. And as we told our stories, I discovered that that man was a predator. He was a pedophile and he was going after many girls like me. Even in that church, I was not the only one he was messing with. And I say these things on purpose because we were not messing around. He was messing with us. Stop trying to make these girls adults because you're too cowardly to do what's right by them i'm gonna stop it here because we're at 9 11 9 1 1 um and uh i'll continue it on the next one if i uh, if my battery can make it